All right, hey guys. So, the uh, the Star Wars Battlefront Two Last Jedi DLC trailer just dropped uh, about six hours ago, and I just got home, and uh, I watched it literally a couple minutes ago, and uh, I want to break it down and talk about it for a bit. So, uh, yeah, uh, I'm not gonna put the video up on screen mostly because. I don't know how to do that on a PS4, but I'm going to be playing it with the volume all the way up just so you can hear, and I'm going to be pausing at some key parts. If, if you want to go watch it for yourself, just look it up on YouTube so you're not completely lost at what the hell I'm watching. So here we go. There's Phasma. Pause instantly. So it says choose a side. From what all of the things that I'm hearing on social media, apparently the majority of the players are going to the First Order side, and that's the side I went to, personally, uh, just because I like being the villain, unlike the campaign. So, yeah, it's gonna, so you have to pick a side, I already picked the First Order, so you have to pick a side and whichever side wins the resistance of the First Order, uh, you get a special star card for the character on the side that won, so if you were on the resistance you get a special maxed out star card for Finn I believe, and you get a XP booster? And uh, vice versa, if you're on the uh, First Order side, you get a special star card for Phasma. One thing I wanted to point out for this trailer is that I don't believe they showed any Captain Phasma gameplay. I might be wrong. Uh, we'll just have to keep watching the video, and maybe I'll see some gameplay. But as far as I know, I didn't see any gameplay for her. There's, Numbers aren't everything. There's Finn. Let me just say that this map looks fucking amazing. I love how the footprints from the ATSTs and the giant ATAT -AT things, they make all the fucking red dirt come up from the salt. It looks amazing. EA is a shitty company, but damn, they make some really good games. I'm gonna rewind a bit actually. I'm gonna pause it right here. So those weird things from the trailer where they have those uh, needles that kind of stick out from underneath them and uh, like split open the ground and cause all the red dust to fly out. Uh, you get to play as those when you're on the crate map. I think they might be speeders from the looks of it because they're moving really fucking fast. They might be speeders like like the uh, the Endor speeder bikes or the snow speeder, those types of vehicles. Uh, they don't really look that easy to control, and they look like if you stand still, you're not really going to have much to defend yourself. So it's going to be interesting seeing how these things are implemented. There's a cool interior of some... Uh, crystal caves looks like red crystal maybe it's maybe this is a smaller map because it looks very close quarters or maybe it's just the second phase once the uh, walkers get to the base all right there's Finn gameplay taking down one of the ATSTs I don't I don't think that was John Boyega I'm gonna go back to when uh, he talked. Yeah, here it is. Listen. Don't let him shake you. Numbers aren't everything. Was that John Boyega? I'm not quite sure if that was him or not. I mean, he was in the uh, This Is Battlefront 2 trailer. So it would surprise me if he didn't voice 
been, because I know Daisy Ridley voices Ray in this game. But anyway, moving on. All those needle things just crashed into the dirt and is going towards the walkers. Just got taken out. Alright. <laughs> Iden's story continues. Oh my god, the fucking campaign. Uh, Alright, I'll, I'll talk about it after this. We could learn how powerful the First Order really is. Then the Resistance might have a chance. Alright, so I paused and uh, there's a uh, gameplay of Iden Versio, who's really old, probably about uh, Princess Leia's age. Because this is taking place now during the Force Awakens era. Why is she like 30 or 40 years older, but still sounds like she's 20? I, she could have tried harder to make herself sound older, but anyway. There's old Princess Leia. They should bring in... They seem to have the model for her. So I assume old Princess Leia might be a skin for her. Like a hero skin. And that's it. And in the bottom right corner, you see Season 1, Free for All Players, December 13th. But here's the thing. You already know it's not going to be free. Even though there's no season pass and all the DLCs are free, you're still going to have to buy the heroes and the villains each and every season. Because we they want to give us, quote-unquote, pride and accomplishment. Fuck off, EA. Oh my god. Why? Why would they do this? They advertise the game for having... Like, three or four times the amount of heroes from the first game. But half of them are blocked behind pretty much paywalls. And now since the microtransactions are gone, the entire progression system is fucked. And it's going to take us at least three hours to get each of these characters. I lucked out when I got, when I pre-ordered... I shouldn't have pre-ordered, but I did, because I was stupid. I pre-ordered right when I saw Darth Maul in the trailer. But, um, I spent f about $50 in microtransactions just to see if I could get a boost. And all my star cards are shit. But I did get enough credits to buy every single hero outright. So, it's really 50-50. Like, you could get enough credits to buy every hero and have shitty star cards at first or you can get amazing star cards but not be able to play as the heroes because you didn't get enough credits and uh on the same vein as for the campaign oh my god that campaign why are they making the campaign why, why did they split it up? Why are they adding a new piece of campaign for each of the DLCs? I don't fucking get it. Why not just have it in the game to begin with? Even though the campaign was mediocre, it, was, it became a standard Star Wars shooter not even halfway through the game. So you start off as Iden Versio, this super high-ranking Imperial commander... And then, oh my god, and then she finds out what Operation Cinder is. It's this plan to destroy this Imperial planet, and she's like, oh fuck, uh, shit, I don't, I don't like killing people. Even though I've been killing people this entire time, I've been happy to kill innocent civilian, civilians. I was probably inside the Death Star when it blew up Alderaan with Princess Leia inside it. And then her and her little fuckboy friends broke off and started killing a bunch of stormtroopers and escaped the planet. 
and then she meets Princess Leia and Lando, and Princess Leia, instead of interrogating them and then executing them instantly, she's like, okay, go on a mission with Lando to prove your loyalty, and they're like, okay, and then they go, and then once they come back, Princess Leia's like, welcome to the old, welcome to the new republic, thanks for blowing up my home planet, but I'm gonna forget that, let's let bygones be bygones. Oh. They advertise the campaign as being stormtrooper side only. And then, I feel like they just couldn't think of any ideas that wouldn't break the canon if they kept her on the darks, on the, uh, on the stormtrooper's side. Uh, and then, there's this one part when you're playing as Lando on a Solist. And that you're with Shriv, which is like the alien guy. By the way, he's my favorite character in any Star Wars video game ever. But, um... He gets to this part where he's inside this volcano. And he has to, like, figure out a way to des to destroy it from the inside or something. I can't remember. I haven't played it in a bit. But he has to get across this gap of lava. And the only way to get across is if he brings down this ATS, this uh, ATAT. That's like attached to this like winch because it was being repaired. So he sees this like button and the objective says go press the button and then you press it and then it doesn't work. And then Lando's like maybe it's this one. And then it says try the other button. And then he presses it and it doesn't work again. And then on the top of the screen the objective says just shoot the thing. Like, in all caps with an exclamation point after it. It's just like, just shoot the thing. And that's pretty much what the campaign is. That's all I can describe it as. You start off as a stormtrooper. It's getting really, really good. And then, once you turn to the rebel side, you just shoot things and you win. Like, there's no... Uh, there's no objective. There's no, like... There's only one stealth mission in the entire game, and that's the first mission. And the rest of the game is like, alright, go to this planet, then you shoot the things, and then, oh, you're Luke Skywalker now, and then you kill these, you kill these stupid bug things, and you're back as Iden for like 20 minutes, and now you're Princess Leia on Naboo, and then shoot those things, and then protect this guy, but shoot the things at the same time. Ugh. Oh. God, why, I mean, at least they gave us a campaign, unlike Star Wars Battlefront 1, but man, they could have done so much better with the campaign, they wasted so much potential, what they should have done, they should have set the campaign they should have been like, no, fuck off, we're not doing Iden Versio story. They should have started it off as, you're a clone trooper in the, uh, what's it called, during the Clone Wars. And it doesn't, let's just say we're starting on the good side. You're a clone trooper and you're starting in the Clone Wars. Let's say you're fighting on Naboo and then you have to keep the droids at the, uh, the palace. And then once you do that... A few years pass by, and now you're on, like, fucking Coruscant and, or some shit, and you're doing Order 66. You're part of the 501st. And then, since you're already, like, converted, then you start your training as a, as a stormtrooper. And then, since you're cloning, like, since the clones don't age as fast as humans do, he's fighting alongside the Imperials, and then eventually... The campaign goes into that same soldier. Alright, maybe not that same soldier because he'd be really old by then. Let's say he has a kid and then that kid goes on to fight for the First Order. And then you're on the First Order side for the rest of the campaign. See, we I just thought of a better campaign than what they gave us. I thought of a better campaign in in five seconds 
than what it took EA to make a campaign in two years. So... Oh no, this was supposed to be a Last Jedi DLC trailer breakdown. Uh, but pretty much... Uh, I'm not that excited for this DLC, mainly because I, you, I already know that we're gonna have to pay for the we're gonna have to pay for the heroes of credits and it's gonna take us a long time to get those credits <clears throat> and I saw this leak about all these cosmetic items coming out like you can change your uh, alien race depending on what class you are that shit sounds fucking amazing oh my god like I'm so sick of playing as humans on the Rebel side because I would always play as the aliens in the first Battlefront game. And now I can play as the aliens. And they added a couple more aliens to the game, like the Aqualish. Um, these, these, uh, these weird, like, fucking, like, raptor things. They're not raptors. They're, like, fish people. They kind of look like Mon Calamari, but they're not. They added Zabrax, but, um, it's the Dathomir Zabrax, so it's kind of weird. But other than that, they look really good, and the Clone Trooper customization looks really good. That's what I'm excited for. That's what the fucking... the loot crate should have been for. You should have... if they had made this game cosmetic microtransactions only, and, like, you still had to buy the gems to like unlock them faster but you were still able to unlock everything at a decent rate EA wouldn't be in this situation right now this game would be fucking game of the year if they had done that but they got greedy and now and now they're in a whole load of shit and they're just digging themselves a deeper hole by lying to us and saying that oh we don't want to break the canon for Star Wars by adding in all this customization we don't want we don't want a pink Darth Vader granted I don't want a pink Darth Vader I would fucking uninstall if they added pink Darth Vader but you know what I mean like <clears throat> eventually once all the DLC comes out people are gonna want more but they're not gonna get more because all the heroes that were leaked and revealed, pretty much we've all played as we've played as all of them, starting from the original, like the original original Battlefront. We've played as all the heroes that have been revealed, except for Padme. If you don't know, Padme and Django are supposed to come out as a bundle for probably a Geonosis DLC or something. And Padme's the only character that we've never played as in a Battlefront game. Everyone else, General Grievous, Django, Dooku, uh, Anakin, and Obi-Wan, we've already played as them. It's no doubt they're going to make them look amazing, and I bet their gameplay is going to feel amazing. But I'm just saying, they they need to be more creative, like... Why not have Grand Moff Tarkin in the game? I've always... I wanted him once I heard about the Death Star DLC in the first game. That's what... that That's, like, the main villain that I thought would be coming to the Death Star DLC. Not fucking Bosk. I don't... No one likes Bosk. Who the fuck wants to play as Bosk on the Death Star? I thought Grand Moff Tarkin was, like... Was so fucking... Expected... And obvious. Can you imagine just like running down the Death Star with Tarkin? You have like a tur you have like a droid that has like a turret on it that like shoots things, and like one of your emotes is like, you may fire when ready. That would be fucking amazing. I've always wanted to play as Tarkin. But we're probably not gonna get Tarkin. We're not getting any of the cl animated Clone Wars shit, as far as I know, because the leaks were are pr from a really credible source. And there's no Ahsoka, no Cad Bane, no Pong Krell, no one, no fucking... Well, I don't really want Captain Rex because he's just gonna look like a normal clone, but again, you know what I mean. 
we're not going to get Savage Opress, even though... Ah, well, we could get Savage if we, um... If Darth Maul ends up getting a Savage skin, which I hope he does. And like it changes his voice lines and everything. But yeah. And they're supposed to add a ton more, like, uh, hero skins. Like, I heard that Chewbacca's gonna have one for a C-3PO who's gonna be, like, tied to his back like he did when they're on Bespin in Episode 5. That's a skin that I would work for, that I would, like, put in work for. Even though I don't think anything should be locked, I feel like they should just be given to us outright. I don't feel like working to earn the amount of credits, which takes, like, an hour to get, like, 200 credits just so I can get C-3PO and Chewbacca's back, which pro which will probably cost, like, fucking 500 credits. Or if we have to do these obs insanely difficult challenges, like, like, s defeat, like, fucking play a round of arcade mode on hardcore in one life to unlock this skin. Like, I don't have the time for that. Like, I really don't. Like, that's why no one has the bearded Han Solo skin, because, one, it looks awful. I hate how he looks with the beard. And two, no one cares about playing through arcade, because multiplayer is where it's at. They have a great multiplayer game, but they're not implement they're not doing it well like the sh the gunplay feels amazing the graphics are better than ever i didn't i didn't think they could make it better from the last game i thought battlefront 1 would be the pinnacle of like graphics in any game but no they somehow made it at least 5 times better than the last game eh, but whatever i've ranted and i've gone off on a tangent for long enough uh, just wanted to put this out here, and uh, I'll see you next time. Peace.